the, the first Not Olinand podcast seemed to go down quite well. Unfortunately, I'm not joined by either of the Deirdres this week. Um, I'm hoping that Deirdre, the real Deirdre, will join us soon. So I'm going to keep plugging away and hopefully she'll, um, she'll, she'll see that it's not going to be too difficult and we'll, we'll have our first Laura and the real Deirdre on an end podcast. So um, keep your fingers crossed and keep voting on the Ravelry thread and she'll, she'll, I'm sure she'll join us soon. Um, a few of you wanted to see Deirdre Mark 2 again. I'm really sorry. Um, my son, Do, aka Deirdre Mark 2, he doesn't actually live here um, anymore. He's actually 24. So um, he lives in the city, in Cork City. Um, actually, my daughter lives in Cork City too. Um, and um, he comes back at weekends. I don't see Dina so much. Dina's 26. Uh, I tend to see Dina maybe once or twice a week. She comes to knitting group. She has recently got a new job, so and it's going to be nights, so she won't be able to get to the knitting group. We meet up once a week, she won't be able to get to that. But hopefully she will pop over at the weekends, or I'll pop up to her. We're quite close, so it would be quite difficult not seeing her. We tend to speak to each other maybe every day or every other day. We're trying to wean ourselves off a little bit because um, her boyfriend and her plan to move to Brighton, so... That, that'll be a bit of a change for all of us uh, and I suppose while I'm talking about them I have another another child uh, Kai is my youngest and Kai definitely does live at home in fact he's on school holidays at the moment as I'm sure most most nearly everybody else's children are um, and he is gaming in the room just next door so I have asked him to, to try and rein it in a little bit um, any parent of of children that like to game um, you'll know what I mean. They have a tendency to, to get really into it. They shout a bit, scream a bit. Um, and I occasionally have to go in and remind him about his language. So, um, but hopefully we'll get through this and it'll be okay. So, since we last um, spoke, and that was a really quick podcast, um, that was more just a bit tongue-in-cheek, as I'm sure you, I'm sure you saw. Um, since we last spoke, my... Needles have been going frantically, but we've also been very busy trying to get bits and pieces ready for the magazine. Uh, hopefully, most of you will have read the magazine or had a good look through, and you'll see that the format is very similar to other crafting knitting publications that are out there. We have the usual things like yarn reviews. Um, we, we're trying really hard to give it an Irish theme, so we have a handmade in Ireland um, section where we we try and encourage makers to send in their wares uh, for us to feature in the magazine uh, and then we also try and look at the certain things that are going on in the fibre industry here where possible. The, so far we've covered things like um, alpacas in Ireland, that was really really interesting, we had really good, good fun with that. We've looked at tapestry weaving in depth from a from an Irish point of view. We our coming issue in July is going to be our eco ethical um, green issue, which means that we can concentrate a little bit more on what's available here or or homegrown yarns. So we'll extend that to the UK. The 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 wool. The British wool situation in the UK is very industry is very very heavily supported, which is great to see, and um, it would be our hope that in the future that will start to come through to Ireland and that the Irish yarn industry will be quite heavily will become supported um, with particular emphasis on breed specific yarns. Um, that's my little my little bee in my bonnet. I get on my soapbox quite an awful lot about how. We should nurture what's going on here a little bit more, um, both from an Irish point of view and an international point of view. So, um, so we're really looking forward to that. But that means that we've been um, all over the country so far trying to, to um, find things to do and things to share with you. Uh, we've been working with rags in uh, down near Sheep's Head, actually, with a great lady that we met at the Sheep's Head Festival, Yarn Festival. We have been dyeing with natural dyes. That 
was here actually, that was at my house. And just this Saturday gone, it's Tuesday now, just this Saturday gone, I travelled to Dublin to do some indigo dyeing. Um, and I love indigo dyeing, that's something that I think I, I can see myself getting much more heavily into. That's the second time that I've done indigo, second time, no, third time actually, that I've done indigo dyeing with um, a different tutor. And it was really, really good fun. I had really had a really, really good time. Uh, you'll find out a lot more about it in the magazine when the magazine's released. One of the things I can share with you is that we were allowed to take something of our own to try and dye. So um, Deirdre, actually Deirdre, the real Deirdre, had bought me the Modern Dyers handbook as one of my Christmas presents, which was wonderful. Um, and if you look in the book, there's this fantastic tunic. Oh, I don't know if you can see it. Let me pop something on the page and then I won't feel so worried. Here we go. And it's just a basic, it's a linen tunic, uh, just a straight up and down kind of rectangle where it's gathered in at the neck to form a V and then there's a large belt. Uh, and although I have some linen that I, I've been saving to make something, I was kind of worried that maybe I would mess it up with the indigo. So I went and bought some very cheap calico, you know, like a natural cotton calico. And I made it in that. Um, and I dyed it using one of the indigo techniques that we were taught and touch wood. It's turned out really, really well. I'm really pleased. Uh, and I'm, I'm looking forward to being able to share it. I, I'll probably be sharing that on my blog rather than the Orlan and blog. I may, I may show it on a podcast if, if we get round to doing a podcast. Um, but that, that was really, really, really good fun. Um, I had lots of, lots of good fun. I met lots of lovely people. Uh, it was held in a, in a big old factory. So it was, it was a bit different to any other, any other workshop I've been to before, but it was good fun. The teacher was fantastic. So yeah, be sure to look out for that. That will be in the out and about event section in the July issue so keep an eye out for that. In terms of what I've been making I'm just having a look oh finished objects so you might remember in the last the, sm the small itsy bitsy teeny weeny uh, Ollen Ad podcast that I showed you a Nelly May shawl that I had made it was my first Nelly May shawl in the green that I'd made um, and a lot of you hopefully would have seen the second one that I made, that was the one that Sadie, one of our good friends, modelled in the magazine for us. And then because we had a knit along going on, on the Nelly Mate, it was our first knit along, our first Ollen and knit along, I felt it would be good to just kind of, to make another one. But it needed to be a complete opposite to the ones that I'd made previously. So I chose bright orange, as you can see. Um, and unlike the original Nelly May, I only did the three lace repeats because, well, it's kind of blaring out a little bit there. To be, to be honest, I have quite a lot of big triangular shawls. There we go, I'll disappear. Um, I have quite a lot of big triangular shawls and I wanted something that was a little smaller, a little bit more wearable, uh, just to bung on in the summer. I tend to get quite cold. Um, because I live in a, in a big farmhouse and we have our own, our whole own different weather system going on here. It could, you could be freezing up here and you could go down the town five minutes drive away and it would be boiling. It would be really, really hot quite often. I go down to town with socks on and a scarf on and a jumper on and five minutes down there I'm like, oh, oh. hopefully it's not my age yet, but it could be, I suppose. In terms of other finished objects, I think I showed you briefly as well that I've been working um, with my yarn from the Famous Five Yarn Club, which is Terry from A Fine Fish Yarn. Sorry, I put it out of my reach. And I was doing a shawl, which I put up on my blog and on my Instagram account and asked for everyone's opinion of because I, I wasn't completely sure that I liked it. I think I'm... I tend to be someone who favours solid colours. I, I love variegated yarns. I think they're beautiful. And um, in the hand cut, I would merrily have them all around my house. But 
for me, when I when I knit with them, I I, I don't often like the way they look. I, I I actually actually that's not fair. I love them when they're used with a solid. So if if it's a, a variegate if it's a stripe effect with a variegated and a solid, I really really like them. Um, but I tend to not be someone who knits with variegated an awful lot. It's just it's just me. It tends to be semi solids or um, or solids. So. I, I persevered and I continued on with the the little shawlette that I was knitting using the Fine Fish uh, Famous Five Yarn Club, the first instalment, the first month's instalment. And I'm really, really pleased that I did actually. Now it needs blocking and I will show you it properly when it's blocked next time, but I can give you a sneaky peek. So if you look, this is it here. So you can see I used all the different five colours and I striped them with two row stripes. Now I ran out. I was making it slightly bigger and so I ended up having to put this red border on the bottom just to kind of which I think ties it all in quite nicely actually the red I can't remember if that's a yarn I dyed or if it's a yarn that I had in my stash I think it might actually be one of the yarns that I dyed I I um I I was intending on becoming an an, an indie dyer um, when I still had the shop, I'd dyed up a, a whole range of yarns to go into the shop and didn't think that it would be, didn't think it would be the right thing to release them when I started the magazine. Um, who knows, maybe, maybe when I started, when myself and Deirdre started the magazine. Um, who knows in, in the future, maybe I will, but for now, no. So at the moment I've lots of really nice yarn to knit with that I dyed. Um, and I tend to dye semi-solids, I don't know, yeah, you can kind of see, yeah, so I, 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 I like, as I said, I like semi-solids, so I try to dye semi-solids. Um, if you're interested in terms of what I had left from the famous five yarn club, let me put them on my hand and you can see, so that's the four, whoops, it says, that's the four, four of the colours, that's how much I had left, and then this is the fifth so you can see not much at all um, I did consider starting the border with this color and then moving on to the red but I thought it looked better all in one so so I'll, I'll get that blocked and then I can show you it next time uh, the last finished object I'm going to show you is actually wet um, I cast this on last night and I cast it on last night because I'm meeting with a with some good friends tonight who one of them has had a her daughter has had a, a new baby girl, a little baby girl. Um, and I just wanted to give her a little something and I realised that whilst I did have a few things, I always have a few things knitted that I can kind of dip into. Um, and that was my plan. The baby was quite a big baby, it was kind of an eye eye watering ten pounder. Um so I wasn't completely sure that anything I had would fit. Uh, I think most of the stuff I had have put away as newborn. Um, so I wanted to give something that would fit. So this is this is wet and um, it needs to go back on the blocking mats, but I picked it up just to show you. It's a little entrechat. I think that's how you pronounce it. Can you see? Isn't it beautiful? Can you see the the stitches? Aren't they lovely? I think we're getting a bit of a shadow. Um, but it, but it's a gorgeous little pattern. If if you haven't knitted it, have a look. Um, I made myself some notes that I could, so I could try and get it right. It's by um, a lady called Lisa Shemery, I think C H E M E R Y. And as I say, it's called Entrechat, I think. And it takes a, a such a tiny little amount of yarn. This yarn was actually yarn I had left from. I did a a two color baby blanket for another um, friend's son who had a baby this time, or well, he didn't have the baby. But And I used up a lot of my um, Merino Aran ends. I had a, I'd kept a load of them. I picked out all of the kind of unisex boy colors um, and I mixed them with, I knitted those in, held together with a, with a, um, a cream yarn, which was this yarn here, which is the New Zealand uh, Adrafil's New Zealand yarn in shade 02 which is a really nice kind of neutral ivory uh, and 
this is a this isn't a full ball this is a, is 63 grams of what was a 100 gram ball and i had two of these and i used the other one to knit the entrechat and that's kind of what i had left so you can see the entrechat uses very little yarn i weigh i did weigh it this morning and i'm pretty sure that i've used about 55 grams just to knit the little entrechat which is in the 3 to 6 month size and if I'm right, that's around 120, 125 meters. So it, it really is such a tiny, small amount of yarn and it's a quick knit. It probably took me, I think I cast on around kind of maybe six in the evening and I was done by sort of bedtime, by about, um, probably about 12. But in the meantime, I'd got up and I'd made the dinner and I'd walked the dogs and I'd washed up and all of those bits and pieces that need doing. So I'd say maybe four hours. So, which was a pleasant four hours that I whiled away watching Game of Thrones and catching up on the sewing bee. Um, it was an eventful evening. I won't, I won't give you any spoilers. Um, in terms of purchases, I, well, I was going to say I don't purchase much yarn anymore. Having had a yarn shop, I really do have quite a lot of yarn. <laughs> and now doing the magazine, I have even more yarn. <laughs> um, and... You can feel a bit guilty. To be honest, I'm at the stage where I, I tend to feel a little bit guilty. My yarn stash will definitely outlive me. There is no way I will be able to knit my yarn stash. Having said that, I do still buy yarn. I really shouldn't, but I do. And actually today I have made a purchase, but it was knitting needles. I desperately needed five millimeter knitting needles. Um, I do have them. I, I definitely have them. Um, I tend to use circulars now, and I definitely have them in straights. But I um, and I definitely have them in circulars. But they're all they're all being used. I think <laughs> I'm hoping so. Um, I tend to at the moment I'm favouring the Nipro Cubics. Uh, I have I have quite bad hands, um, and the Cubics seem to work really well. I've tried a lot of different needles recently. I tried some higher highers, um, which I liked, but, but to be honest, I cut the fingers off myself. So uh, I've gone back to my cubics and I noticed when I was knitting the entrechat last night that although I'm knitting something else for the magazine on five millimeters, I couldn't find any other five millimeter tips. And rather than go to the bother of taking the tips off and um, putting on the end caps, I knitted the little launch shot on a 4.5 mil. Um, so, so today the 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 important thing to do was to go and order some some new 5.5 mil tips. So, hopefully they're on their way to me. Hopefully they'll be coming out quite quickly because I use five mils quite a lot. I did um, have a sneaky a naughty yarn purchase uh, a couple of weeks ago. For you might have seen that the three of the indie dyers three of the Irish indie dyers released uh, special edition yarns for Worldwide Knitting Public Day. So I think um, Fiona from Green Elephant Yarn, she released one which I think was called Summer Rain. It was beautiful. Um, and then Ellie and Ada, Laura from Ellie and Ada, she released a yarn which was, I think it was called Water Worldwide Knitting Public, I think. And then Terry from Fine Fish Yarn, she also uh, released one which was called Junebug. And it was the Junebug that I bought, which it, it's beautiful. It's absolutely gorgeous. I don't know if you can, can see it. Sorry, the light's gone very, very bad in here. It's kind of all aquas and blues and there's little flecks of red and pink and dark blue in it and some yellow. And... I'm not really sure what I'll use it for. I wanted to see what it looked like next to the Portobello. I have a hank of Portobello. This is the um, the core sock, and I'm pretty sure the hank of Portobello that I have is core sock. Um, that's kind of like a, a brownie grey colour, and I wouldn't mind seeing what they look like together because they might work quite well in a shawl together. So I'll check that out. Um, so yeah, so I was naughty and I bought that. Oh, and I'm lying, I did buy something else. But it's in the other room and I probably better not go in and get it. So I'll show you that next time. Um, oh, the entrechat, before I forget. Uh, it, normally I wouldn't, 
I wouldn't normally have sewn in the ends um, before I blocked it but I'm kind of hoping it might dry by the time I have to go out the season and I can just kind of pick it up and put it in the gift bag. It does need a little button here and the buttonhole isn't very big so I'm, I'm toying with, with a wooden flower. Um, I think mum might be quite traditional so I was thinking maybe a pink or something so I'll have a play. I don't really like to put on buttons and sew in the ends before something's blocked but it might be an idea. Um, other things I've purchased recently, oh, bargain, have to share my bargain with you. So I bought these three new to me books. So there's this one, which is Dying for Fibres and Fabrics. And I bought this one, sorry, The 12 Knits of Christmas. I know it's a bit of a dirty word around here. Um, and then the Kid Style Nature Crafts. So, and these wonderful bargain books came to me at the very, very expensive price of one pence each. Um, and in fact, the shipping was more. So the shipping, all in all, I think cost me seven or eight euros. I used the new address pal uh, service that on post have been, have developed, bought out, which is very much like Parcel Motel, I think. You pay, you have a, a, an address, a UK address with a mailbox number on it, and you use that for your mailing address. And the post office notifies you when your package is in and you go down and you pay you take in your little address pal card and your driving license and you prove who you are and you pay three euros fifty and that's it it's done it's great fantastic really really good really really helps um last thing which i suppose is is really a purchase but it was a purchase from a while ago and i didn't pay for it uh i was bought a subscription to ply magazine and this edition which is the bulky edition it arrived yesterday uh, i haven't had a chance to to even glance at it yet so um i tend to get worried that i'll get sidetracked if i start looking at my magazine so i save them so uh, i'm gonna i'm gonna, hoping to have a look at that at the weekend let's have a think about what else is going on in terms of what i'm making as i explained to you last time i'm a really prolific maker I try really hard not to be, but, but I am. I, I'm continually going down different crafting rabbit holes. Uh, at the moment, I have been working on, on a crochet blanket. I tend to have a big granny square blanket on the go. Um, and I have been doing a few rows on that because I've been neglecting it. So I've done a few rows on that. It's a little bit too big to show you at the moment. So maybe next time, once it's maybe when it's a little bit more organised, I'll show you. I'm using two strands of yarn held together, so it gets a bit tangled. Uh, what other things are going on? I've got, so I have a pair of socks on the go that I, I'm at the stage where I need to turn the heel. So this is the first sock. I really should have put it on a sock blocker, shouldn't I? That would have been more professional. So you can see it's the yarn. What is this? It's actually just a, an old ball of opal or trekking, which I've had in my stash for absolutely ages. I'm do I did the the sweet sweet tomato heel, isn't it? The cat body sweet tomato heel. And I did three wedges, which you can't really see. It's actually quite ingenious. It's one of those things that you do it and you're like very much like the fish lips kiss heel. You you do it and you're like, wow, that's so cool. So as you can see I'm I'm at the stage for a heel turn. So I shall get on with that. I might do that tomorrow because I have some other bits and pieces to do. I'm, excuse me, my nose is itchy. I'm making, um, I've got something on the go for the magazine and I've actually got another three or four yarn, little little swatch squares to knit for the magazine. We, um, both Deirdre and I and sometimes some of our friends as well, we knit little swatches with the yarns that come in for us to review so that we can give you a, a like a genuine review. Um, and about... I'm pretty sure it was four yarns came in rather late. So this morning I was was caking them up on the Swift so that I can do little squares. Uh, in terms of what else I've got on the needles, I'm trying very, very hard to be good and finish off some projects. I have one of those really, really big laundry bags uh, full of unfinished projects, many of which just need the end sewing in or button sewing on. And 
It's terrible, isn't it? And I call it my sin bin. And so there's all of these unfinished projects in my sin bin. And quite often it's just because maybe I haven't got time to do them um, or maybe I've just lost my mojo a bit. Um, and I'm trying to I'm I'm trying to make myself I vow to myself that I'm going to try and finish some of those bits and pieces. So one of the projects that I had in the sin bin was um, my climb every mountain jumper, which I'm hoping probably doesn't come out very well. And uh, I'll try and insert a picture here if I can. So the Climb Every Mountain, if I remember rightly, it's a DK weight knit and it's a bit of a cross between a poncho and a cape and a kind of baggy t-shirt. And I have, I think I'm, te I technically, it's meant to be very loose fitting and I would technically be the size medium across the chest, but across the shoulders, I'm, I have very, very small shoulders. So things quite often can easily drown me and I've got relatively big boobs so there's a danger that I have it either falls down from the shoulders or it literally comes out like a tent and balloons and makes me look like I'm quite a lot bigger than I am so I've actually knitted the small size and I'm doing it in a four ply as well because I would like it to be a little bit more fitted uh, a friend of mine started it after I started mine and finished hers a long time ago it's beautiful so I really should get on with it it's terrible of me so that's so that's my my ongoing I'm going to finish it uh, I understand from quite a lot of people and I was talking to a lady on Instagram earlier who'd also made one that the the band the bottom band is an applied eye cord and it can curl so I'm I'm not sure that I'm gonna do the applied eye cord, I love the finish of an applied eye cord though, that's anything that's kind of kind of making me undecided at the moment, so we'll see. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm not sure, maybe a few rows of rib instead, and then I could, the, the sleeves are actually finished in rib on it, so, and initially what I was going to do was finish the sleeves and the sleeves in an applied eye cord so that they would match the bottom band as well, so, so we'll see. I've shortened it, I have, I didn't do... I think I worked all of the repeats for my size, but I actually stopped before I completed the the last repeat. So I'm hoping it's, I tried it on and it, it seems to sit okay. I'm hoping it doesn't block out too big because then it, it will be too big. I'm thinking about it, so I wasn't really concentrating. Um, so, and, and I'll have to try it on again and just see if it's gonna be the right length. Um, the curses of being five foot three on a good day. I think I'm shrinking, so maybe I'm five foot two now. Um, and then my last work in progress, which it is just something that I tend to have thrown in my handbag. I have something like this thrown in my handbag, or um, a pair of socks. But the socks I'm knitting, so you saw one pair, and I've got another pair on the needles as well. They're both at the heels. In fact, I think I cast the blue ones on so that I didn't have to do the heel on them. Uh, the other ones that I've got, and <laughs> the temptation cast on a new pair so I don't have to do the heel on those ones it's quite strong as well so this is just a just a crochet uh, it'll be a crochet uh, granny shawl a triangle granny shawl and I'm knitting with Wendy Rome I don't know if you can see it the light's a little bad sorry um, so I'm, I'm that's just something that I have on the go in my handbag just in case I'm stuck somewhere and either waiting for someone or, I don't know, the car breaks down or something like that, you know, just to have something in, in my handbag on the go. I always used to have something in my glove compartment when I drove to and from work, but now I'm not in the shop, I don't, I don't make such regular journeys anymore, so it would just sit in there, it would languish in there for quite a long time. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else to tell you. As I say, we're working really hard on the next issue of the magazine. And we've got some some really exciting uh, patterns on the go. We actually have, for the following issue, we have all the patterns already sourced as well. So it's great. Uh, we're very conscious that we don't want people, we don't, 
we're a general crafting magazine, we're a fibre and craft magazine, so, and although we have a very strong lilt towards knitting, because obviously both Deirdre and I knit, um, we're not just a, a knitting magazine, so we're trying very hard to highlight that. It can be a little difficult, especially when that's our passion, so if there's anything you want to see in the magazine, please let us know. Um, I will get this edited, hopefully, and loaded up and try and use this to push Deidre again. She said she'd do, she said she would podcast, but it's it's probably trying to get the two of us in the one place that's a little bit difficult. I live in Lismore, Deidre lives in Middleton, and trying to, to meet up during the day is a little bit difficult. As you can see, the, the kitchen, I'm, I'm podcasting in the kitchen, and it's, it's a little dull now, it's, uh, about four o'clock in the afternoon, it's a little done now, um, but my house is definitely the brighter of the two houses, Deirdre's house, especially some of her downstairs rooms can be quite dark, so it would mean she'd have to come up to me. So hopefully, hopefully we can sort it out, um, and we'll bring you a proper Deirdre and Laura Oil and Ander podcast. I hope this has been okay, and I hope to see you again soon. Take care. Bye-bye. Sending you much woolly love. Mwah.